A respirometer is a piece of apparatus that you use to measure the rate of respiration of an organism. And the way it works is that because the oxygen is turned into water and the carbon dioxide that you produce is absorbed by potassium hydroxide, then any change in volume of the vessel is going to be due to the absorption of oxygen. So let's go through the apparatus. So all you have is a container with some form of a grill and then you have potassium hydroxide in the bottom of it which is there to absorb the carbon dioxide. You have your respiring organism, now this may be a mung bean or it may be a maggot, but it's respiring through aerobic respiration or respiring and it's producing carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide that it produces is being absorbed by the solar line. Now remember, the respiring organism is also absorbing oxygen and it's converting that oxygen into water. So if we put a lid on this and then we put a manometer, a YouTube manometer, and we put fluid in the manometer. Then as the mung bean or maggot or any respiring organism converts the oxygen into water, the pressure in the vessel is going to fall because there's going to be less oxygen, which is going to cause the manometer fluid to rise. If you do that over a set period of time, you can calculate rate, which is consumption oxygen per unit time. And then if you weigh the mung bean, you can, or the maggot, you can measure the rate of respiration per unit mass per unit time. A modification to this is sometimes done by including a thermobarometer. A thermobarometer is exactly the same apparatus but on the other side of the manometer. And the purpose of this is to balance any changes in pressure which are not due to the respiration of the organism. So again, you have potassium hydroxide, but you replace the respiring organism with an inert substance of equal mass and equal volume. Therefore, any changes in pressure in this tube, which are not due to the respiration of the organism, will be balanced by changes in pressure to this tube. So if the temperature of the room rises and the, the or temperature of this this vessel rises, then the air will push down this way. However, that will be balanced by a rise in temperature in this vessel, which will push the fluid the other way. So by use of the thermobarometer, it balances any changes that are not due to the respiration of the organism. Okay, RQ or respiratory quotient is the ratio of carbon dioxide produced to oxygen consumed. Now, for something like glucose, you produce six carbon dioxides and you consume six oxygens, and those six oxygens are turned into water. So this gives an RQ of one. For a fat, um, fats have got more carbon-hydrogen bonds than, so the fatty acids each carbon is joined to two hydrogens, whereas for a carbohydrate, each carbon is joined to a hydrogen, joined to an oxygen, joined to a hydrogen. Therefore, there are more hydrogens to be consumed and turned into water. Therefore, more oxygen is used in the respiration of a fat. Therefore, it has a lower RQ, so it has an RQ of around 0.7. because more oxygen is produced, sorry, more oxygen is consumed for the, for the carbon dioxide that is produced. Now proteins um, vary because of the 
respiration of a protein involves the deamination of the amine group and the amine group is then turned into urea in the liver. Now, depending on what the R group is, will affect what the um, RQ is. So the RQ of proteins is a, around 0 0.9, but it will depend on what amino acids are present as to what the RQ will be. Okay, thank you for listening, and I hope you subscribe.